A couple of days ago, I posted a video about my uh, Wilson Combat Perfected Beretta M9A1 Compact here. I had sent this gun off to Wilson Combat, had quite a bit of work done to it, uh, in search of creating the perfect carry gun for me. And I think I succeeded. But that video generated a lot of questions. I didn't foresee that. I didn't think this gun would be as popular as it is or people would care as much about it. But it seems to be a pretty popular little gun. In fact, the picture I posted on Instagram has been the most popular picture I've ever posted on Instagram. So I thought I'd take a moment here tonight to answer some of the questions that I'm getting more often than others about this gun. Because there's a few questions that have come up again and again. I'm getting tired of answering them individually. So I'll make a quick video here and cover them. Now, the first question a lot of people have asked me is, why did I choose a Beretta? Isn't it too big? Isn't it an odd choice for a carry gun? I thought you liked SIGs, etc. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Beretta has always been my first choice for guns. That's not a popular thing to say, I know, but I have always loved Beretta 92s. To me, aesthetically and ergonomically, they are the best gun for me. I've always preferred them over every other gun. There's just been one thing about them that made them not suitable for carry, and that is that they have a manual safety. I won't carry a gun with manual safety, so that one little thing ruined what I thought was otherwise the best gun. Now this gun doesn't have a manual safety, it just has a decocker. So therefore, the gun that I thought was best overall, except for one little tiny thing, is now just best overall, at least for me. And as far as it being thick and heavy, etc., well, it's about one-tenth of an inch thicker in the grip and in the slide than my Glock 19. People talk about this gun like it's a bus. It is not. It is not that big of a gun, and it is not that heavy of a gun. If you think it's that big and heavy, you've probably never shot one. And believe me, the way they feel in your hand and how accurate they are more than compensates for that little bit of extra size. Makes that little bit of extra size well worth it. And that brings up another question I've gotten quite a bit, and that is concerning the accuracy of the Beretta 92 Compact. People are like, is that a very accurate gun? Is it accurate enough to trust your life with? Well, you tell me. Here is the test target from Wilson Combat. This is at 15 yards off of a bench. So there's a penny next to the group. You tell me at 15 yards, does this gun look like it's accurate enough to get the job done? Because I think it looks like it is. Another question I'm getting a lot is cost. How much did it cost to have this done? Well, to do everything I did is between seven and eight hundred dollars. But if you want to look and see exactly what it would cost to do your gun, Wilson Combat has a page that has all the pricing for everything a la carte. You pick what you want. You can have as little done or as much done. Pay for it by the little job. It doesn't have to be a package. They offer packages, but you can also just choose, like I said, little a la carte things, and it'll tell you exactly how much it's going to cost. Now, I would suggest if you're going to send your gun into Wilson Combat to have things done, think about it really well. Make sure you're going to do everything you want to do at one time. Don't try to piecemeal it because there's a lot of turnaround time. It takes about three months to get this done. So, make sure you're going to do everything you want to do at one time. That way, you only got one long wait period. And if you want to know exactly what it's going to cost, like I said, go to their website. Just add it up. And if you want a little help adding it up, send them an email. They're more than happy to help you. In fact, they'll hold your hand every step of the way. Another question I'm getting is, why didn't I get the Ambi safety? As you can see, I've got it here on one side. As you see here on the other side, no safety. I did not get the Ambi safety. Well, that question is a little bit uh, incorrect in its premise because this is no longer a safety. It is a decocker. And while there is a good argument to be had for why you should have an Ambi safety, even if you're right-handed, because you know if you're ever injured and you got to use your offhand to use your gun, you want to be able to deactivate that safety to use your gun with your offhand. So there's a good argument for having an ambi safety on a gun, but with a decocker, there's no argument for that. You're never going to have to decock under duress. Decocking is something you do when you're done and the fight's over. Once the fight's over, you're not under duress anymore. You're not going to have a problem. So with a safety that might be needed, you might have enough benefit from it to make it worth having it. But with a decocker, all it is is a snag hazard that gives you no benefit, so it's not worth having. Now the next question came from some very observant people. When I uh, did my last video on this gun and I unboxed it, I had a little bag in there that had all the parts that Wilson Combat replaced on this gun. In that bag was a trigger. Now I didn't mention anything about the trigger in the first video, but people said, hey, did you replace the trigger because there's a trigger in that bag? Well, yes, I did. I did replace the trigger here. I put a short reach trigger on it. This gives you a little bit less trigger reach on the gun, and I have smaller hands. Well, not smaller, but average, not big hands. So I like a little bit of a shorter reach on the trigger. It helps with the reset, helps with the initial pull, etc. So it is a shorter reach trigger. I did have the trigger job done inside too, changed all the springs, made the trigger lighter, but I actually changed the actual physical trigger also. 
Okay, the next question is sometimes posed as a question, and other times it's just people berating me. They're saying, why did you leave the plastic guide rod in there? Why would you do all this work and not replace that plastic piece of junk guide rod? Well, first off, there's no real reason to change a plastic guide rod in a gun like this. A lot of people, in fact, will make an argument that plastic guide rods are not only as good as metal ones, but in some ways, they're better. They're lighter, they're more flexible, they usually are grooved and allow more debris to flow through them, etc. The metal ones are just stronger and they're heavier, but do you need that strength? Probably not. All a guide rod does is guide the spring when it compresses. That's all it does. It doesn't bear any of the stress of firing, so it doesn't need to be super sturdy. Now, I have ordered a fluted guide rod for it just because I thought it looked nicer. I haven't got it yet, and I haven't put it in yet. I don't know if I will or not. I probably will when I get it. But as far as this plastic guide rod that came from the factory, does that look like plastic to you? I don't know if Brett is using metal ones now or what, or if they quit using the plastic, etc. But they haven't made magnetic plastic yet. That is not plastic. That is a metal guide rod. Okay, another question I've gotten is, now that I have it, is there anything that I would have changed? Well, nope, not really much anything I would have changed. I didn't like the green grips at first. I wished I'd gotten red, but now I'm actually starting to like the green grips. But there is actually one thing I did change. If you see that little metal rod in there, it's just a little metal rod that's inside the decocker. It compresses when you work the decocker. That was bare metal when they sent it to me. It's just the way the part is. It has a little bare metal rod there, and you can see it. Well, I blued it so that it uh, blends into the decocker better. That's the only change I've really made. And I actually still need to clean up around it after I blued it, but that won't be much work. I'll just wipe it down with a little alcohol later. But I just like the fact that it blends in better now, so that's really the only thing I've done. Now, the next question I've been getting is one that's surprising me more than any other question. It's people saying, why would anyone spend so much money on a gun they're going to carry? Don't you want the gun you're going to carry to be something that can take abuse and you don't worry about it? And if you ever get taken away from it, you won't miss it. Well, I don't understand that argument. I would think that the gun I want to carry should be the best gun I have. That's where you should spend your money. The gun you trust your life to daily should be the best gun you own. Now, expensive doesn't always mean best. But if you shoot a $1,200 gun better than any other gun, carry a $1,200 gun. Don't put a monetary value on your life. If you shoot a $600 gun better than a $1,200 gun, don't carry the $1,200 gun because it's fancier. Carry the $600 gun that you shoot better. And as I said before, ergonomically, Berettas are my favorite. I shoot them better than any other gun. So this is the gun I should carry. And I should spend as much money on it as I can to make it the best gun it can be. I would much rather take a chance of losing a great gun if I ever have to defend my life with it than I would losing my life because I didn't carry a good enough gun. And the last little half of that final question is, am I actually going to carry it? Well, to answer that question, I'll just show you this. I got this a while ago. I bought this back when I first ordered the gun. It's been sitting here waiting for the gun to show up. So this right here should answer your question as to whether I'm actually going to carry it. Of course I'm going to carry it. I wouldn't have spent this much money on it if I wasn't going to carry it. I took it to the range today. I put 80 rounds through it. Now, I've had this gun for quite a while, and I've put a lot of rounds through it, so I trusted the gun pretty much already. I just wanted to make sure they didn't screw anything up, and in fact, they didn't. They made it better than ever, so that 80 rounds was enough to make me confident in the gun, so tomorrow will be this gun's first day in duty as my everyday carry gun.